Hello, this is Ben with Fullerton College's Printing and Graphic Arts Departments. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics about how to create a simple pop-up card using Adobe Illustrator, intended to be cut on our Kongsberg V plotter table later on. Oh, and printed on any electrostatic digital printer, ours being a Xerox. Let's begin. The first thing you would want to do in a project like this is get a template set up or opened up uh, I gave one to the class in the Canvas shell uh, that is a 12 by 18 sheet with registration marks around the outside edges. Let's hide these so we can see that better. Let's hide these guides. With those four registration marks in the corner, those registration marks, uh, as a reminder for those of you who have worked on the pumpkin cutting projects and those who have not, those are how we're going to align our cut and our print later on because it needs to print on one device and cut on another and the devices don't talk to each other. So you're gonna to have to be able to manually line that up. Anyways, I'll turn those back on because remember we need to work completely inside, show those guides again. We need to work completely inside those lines. Otherwise we will have problems when we go to cutting and completely fool our cut system. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up our layers menu and we're gonna select the outer cuts layer. For the project I'm having you work on, this would, wants to be a five by seven card so that it can fit into a standard A7 envelope, which is the envelope you and or clients will have the best fighting chance of actually finding in the wild at a non-specialty store. One of the reasons I like it, other than postage reasons of it being pretty standard and the post office giving good rates for mailing things that are five by seven. So if we're gonna make a fold over card that's five by seven, that means we're actually gonna make a much, a double size card, which is going to be seven inches wide by 10 inches tall. And this rectangle will want to have no fill color and a black stroke because in our die cut system, black means cut, red means crease. I will use the align buttons, if I can find them here, to send that vertically aligned. I'm gonna move it off to the left side of the page this will allow me to use the other right side of this page for some of the cutout elements I'm gonna to wanna to add later. So this will be the final outside cut. I'm gonna lock this layer for now because I don't really want anything else on it at the moment. From here, I'm gonna to go to the crease layer and set up a crease. I will try to draw it from the center if I can find the intersect center of this, straight across and ideally a crease should be, where my, there we go, where did my menu go? My crease should be red. Again, just because that's what my system likes and that's what I've seen out in the industry. Black means cut, red means crease. I'm sure now that I've said this, any one of you who are watching my video is gonna go out there and say, well, actually I went to a shop and they said that chartreuse is crease and uh, kind of a blue gray is cut, but if it's too gray, then it means perf. Uh, the answer is always correct to whatever the machine you're working with. The machine I work with likes black for cut and red for crease, so I've adapted. Anyways, we have our crease, we have our cut. We're gonna lock the crease layer for now. We're gonna come back and add more creases and actually adjust this crease later on as we go. Where my layer menu go? There it is, there's layers. We'll lock crease for now. So there is no shortage of other video on YouTube and other places online to show you how to create a pop-up card physically, how to do it with scissors, knives, paper, glue. And really, it's a bit difficult to conceptualize exactly how this is going to fold just from working in Illustrator, where it's easy to get lost in the menus and the technical details and forget about that part of your brain that knows how things work in your hands. So please, build, take a moment, pause the video. And don't go further with this until you've built yourself a dummy out of paper. It doesn't even have to be pretty. It just needs to show the functions of how it's going to fold. Uh, it's... Uh, until you get a sense of how that works, this is going to just be following an exact recipe and getting one thing. But I'm hoping that by building some samples by hand with paper and scissors, you'll be at a place where you're able to do this more accurately and understand cause and effect between uh, the computer file to the final output product. Okay, go do that. Hey, welcome back. Did you make your model? I'm glad. With that model in hand, that folding dummy, we're gonna do a simple one on here. I'm only gonna do one 3D popped out element because this video does not need to go into the excruciating detail of, of four or five or six, seven of them, though you could. So for this, I'm going to take the, not quite the length, the angle I was looking for. So I'm gonna redo this here. There we go. And this line wants to be black. That's right, black, because it's a cut. 
and I'm going to go to the transform menu and make sure that the length is about five inches. There we go. I'm going to center it vertically onto my page here, move it to the left of it, move it to the right, make a copy with the option drag to the right a little bit. And then here's where I'm gonna alter the folds. So I do want it to fold straight through the middle on this one. This one's gonna be a simpler card without too much, uh, too much fuss and too much extra element. So let's just see what it can do with this. So from here, I will wanna go back to the crease layer, lock the inner cuts, unlock the crease. Remember, we always lock the layers we're not using and unlock the layers we are using. I can cheat and click on that line to pick up its colors. Now that I've clicked on it, now my uh, swatch is gonna be a red line and I'll draw a line to connect the tops of these here and down here. And that should make us a card with a, with two vertical slits in it that's going to bump out at those folds. Let me show you by turning off the layers. If I uh, make it invisible so you can't see them, if I turn off the crease lines, you can see it's going to cut the outside rectangle and then cut those two slits. And those two slits are going to hinge on, let's turn off the uh, inner cuts here, they're going to hinge on these three folds. So basically, I'm going to do a counterfold. I'm going to fold against the normal direction of the card so that the inside thing folds out the opposite direction. At this point, I'm going to do what we should have done all along. And I hope you guys are already screaming in your own heads at home that you really need to save this file. So let me give it a quick save. And I will save this thing as what I'm going to be making. Big Bear Card. Dot AI. Great. So I have it saved because you you got to make sure you save your progress. From here, I'm going to pull some uh, graphics to put onto this thing from a different file I've already worked on. So now I've popped over to my Big Bear travel poster I made on a previous si assignment with you guys, and I'm going to use this for this demo pop-up card. Uh, anyways, I'm going to borrow from some layers on here. I'm going to grab everything on this background layer. I'm going to head back over to this other thing, which is hopefully sharing. Yes, good. Sorry, I don't always trust my recording program to share the correct screen. Sorry if I sound doubtful as I switch between the two. So we're back over here, and I'm going to make sure I go down and lock the layers I'm not using. You definitely don't want to put this on crease. I'm going to go to the artwork layer, which is at the bottom, and I'm going to paste. What I built is way too big, so I'm going to shrink this thing down and shrink it so that it fits onto what we're building here. I'll probably do some, um, because of what I've done, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of extra work to fix this. I'm gonna line up the, the water line of my little lake here so that it is, if I make this a little bigger, um, there we go. Line up that water line so it's on the crease line in the middle because that'll make the most sense. I'll expand this down, a, whoop, I will expand. Why is it moving instead of stretching? There we go. Stretches down a little bit down past. And then I'm probably going to make a rectangle real quick to make a clipping mask on here. And I want my rectangle to be, it's 10 by seven. So I'm gonna make it seven and a quarter by 10 and a quarter to account for an eighth inch of bleed. That's right. Cause the bleed is an eighth of an inch. You guys are great. So I'll place this on top of this, center it as best I can. Select all, right click, and make clipping mask. There we go. Now my artwork is neatly contained, and I have my lake with cloud background reflected on the lake right through the center of this thing. From there, I'm going to want to add other elements to here. So let's go ahead and grab. That's going to be a separate layer here, the Boulder Bay layer. I'm going to copy this whole island and paste it over here. Now, this island is bigger than I'm going to want, and we can make it so it gets cut off. Uh, but one of the other things I have to look at is the height of this needs to be smaller than that bump out there in the middle. The height of any object that you want to put onto this uh, card must be... Sorry, I can make that sentence better. The height of your object plus the distance from the edge of the card needs to be less than the size of the card. So my island, including that tree I want to stick up, has to be two and a half inches or smaller because, there we go, because this is a two and a half inch bump out that it's going to be attached to. 
I may want to adjust the bump out in the future so it doesn't show as much, but this is at least a good basic starting place. And this can come right out to the middle and kind of look what it's going to look like. Um, now that I have it scaled, I'm going to move this off to the side over here so it's not on top there. With that, um, this is on the artwork layer. I'm going to copy this. And because it's already drawn in vector, I can cheat. Uh, remember, if you're using photographs, your best friend is called the pen tool. And you'll simply pen tool the outline of what you want to cut. Uh, because I've already pen tooled over reference photos, this already is pen tooled. So let's lock the artwork layer. I'm going to go back to the inner cuts layer. In fact, I'll turn off the artwork for a layer so you see what I'm doing here. And paste in front, Command F or Control F for you Windows users. And this. I guess we all know I just got an email. Yay. So with this on front of it, uh, I can now, well, to be blunt, cheat a bit. I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool and unite it into one solid shape. Now it's a solid green outline. And I have one or two last things that I want to do to make this cut properly. One, obvious, hopefully obvious to you guys at this point, is I want to make it an outline. And what color should my outline be if it's a cut? That's right, black. A black outline. I also want to go back in and delete a few of the details that are just not going to work. Like that little spot there is a little spot here that's kind of isolated. Because when I first built this, it was, wasn't intending to cut. The rest of this should work pretty much OK. Although I'm a little worried the tree may be kind of a fine detail. It might survive. It sounds like a good vote of confidence, doesn't it? Let's turn the other layer back on and take a look to make sure it's working. So we turn on the artwork. In toggle that on and off. You can see that it lined up just right, and it will cut out the island with the two lone trees. I guess they're not lone if there's two of them. The pair of lonely, but at least they have each other, trees on that little rocky island. So that's going to work for that piece. In the final construction, this is going to be glued or taped to the bump out uh, counterfold of the actual basic card template. Cool. I'm actually pretty close to done with what I would want to do with this one at this point, except the island is still a little bit wide. So let me go back to the cuts layer, which is what I'm on. And if I select this and I go to transform, I can see that, in fact, the width is a little bit wider than the actual um, card can be. So I'm going to do a another Pathfinder trick here to make this fit. I'm not going to worry about the artwork, because if it cuts the artwork smaller, oh well, it's not going to cause any problems for me, actually. So if I grab a rectangle, and I'm going to make sure the rectangle's width is 7. Or maybe even a little smaller. We'll do 7. 7 works. This is going to mean it has to be the exact same width as the, uh, the card. So it'll be full edge to edge. I'm going to let, arrange this around to include the parts that I really want to have in this there we go. And I'll bring this down smaller so it's a little bit bigger than this. That's fine, too. And basically what I'm going to do is select these two items and then use the Pathfinder to choose Intersect, which is only keep the path that's inside both, which is going to trim off the outside edges, like so. There we go. So now you can see that I've cut it a little bit short and it has a few hard edges here and here just to make sure that it's going to fit on the page. The last thing I would do, just because I'm being kind of picky about how I want my card to look, uh, just like when I did my travel poster, let me switch back over to the po poster to show you what I did over here. Make sure this is working. Yes, good, you can see it, as far as I can tell. Uh, so the poster has a reflection in the lake of the island, which is kind of how you sell the fact that it's a lake. It reflects the sky, or reflects things that are on it. So if I go back over to here, again, checking, make sure it's actually sharing the right screen, because I'm always paranoid that it's not. There we go. I'll switch myself at this point back to the layers, layers menu, come on up. I'm going to unlock, I'm going to lock inner cuts, unlock artwork, select artwork. Then I'm going to do a copy drag of this over to, actually, yeah, over to where it's going to go. And then I'm going to stretch it upside down into the water. The last thing I would do to really make really sell this as a reflection is I think I'm going to go find my opacity and knock that back a bit. So there, now you have a faded reflection in the water right below where the bump out's going to be. And I think this is going to make itself a nice card. 
From here, you just have to save it as the proper file types, and uh, we'll demo cutting these later. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, one last note on how to do that. You need to save two separate files. So I'm going to do a file save as. Remember, you always do your save as first. And I'll throw this on the desktop for right now. Big Bear card dash print. I always label them so I know what I'm doing with them. I know it seems boring and pedantic, but you know what else is a boring pedant? Every single computer involved in this process cares if you spell things right, cares if you name things right. Don't give yourself or them any room for error. Be boring in your naming. Anyways, the print version wants to be a PDF because printers like PDFs. Save. Save. Now that I've done the save, I can do the scarier part, and I'm going to turn off the crease. I'm going to turn off the outer cuts. I'm going to turn off the inner cuts because I don't want to see them. When I go to print, I just want to see the artwork, nothing else. And I'll save this as my print file. Then I'll do a second save as to make my cut version. Tell me it's showing that. I hope I hope you can see this in the final video. We'll find out when I review this later. Uh, so the big part, big bear card cut wants to be an AI file because the cutter likes vector info, and if you give the cut system an AI file, it'll follow it quite nicely. Save. Okay. So we did the save. Then we can do the important but scary changes. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, when you do the other version, the print version, make sure those registration marks are there. You want those to print. Anyways, back over here in the cut version, let me double check, yep, big bear card cut.ai, so I know that's the version I'm working with. I am going to not just turn off and disable, but actually completely remove, delete, obliterate, exterminate the artwork layer. Just get rid of it. And this right here is going to be a good file for the cutter. The cutter wants the reg marks, it wants your cut lines, and it wants your crease lines. From here, we could take it over to the printer and to the Kongsberg and see how it turns out. Thanks for watching.